Okay, so we're going to look at how to extract the coordinates on a map. And so here's a magnetic map. And you can see these circular features are actually sills, magnetic sills that they're picking up. And say, for example, I wanted to travel to each sill to collect a um, geochemical sample. Um, I need to know what the coordinates are. And I can just put my mouse over it, and you can see down here it shows the coordinate system and the X and Y value, and you could write that down, but it would take quite a while. And so I would suggest creating a new database. I'm just going to call it test. It's a good idea to call it something useful. And you can see it comes up there. And then I'm going to go grid and image, utilities, and grid profile. So grid profile, literally, you would um, click uh, twice and to extract the data along a profile. But we're going to create really short profiles, and it should just give you one data point and then you'll know that what that value is at that data point, and that's the point at which you want to collect a sample. So grid profile. Um, it really doesn't matter what grid you use, because you don't actually care what the grid values are, you just want the X and Y values. So I've just chosen the magnetic grid. Um, the line number, this is important because you want to make sure you don't write over any of your um, coordinates. So let's say this is going to be site 1, that I'm going to, to collect data and I'm going to digitize from that and I'm going to click OK and so it says enter points on the profile right click when done so my first point that I'm going to go to is here so I'm going to do a click at the bottom and I click at the top of a very short profile that I'm pretending to collect I right click and I go done and so if we go back now to our database you can see if I go up here and right click and go to list, oh, I haven't collected anything. Okay, let's try it one more time. I think what I did wrong, grid and image, utilities, grid profile, is possibly I didn't put in the sample interval. So I'm going to put 5,000, so literally 5,000 meters. I click OK, OK, click at the bottom. Click at the, I think I actually didn't click properly last time. Right click done. And so going back to my database, you can see it's given me an X and Y coordinate for the southern part and northern part of my profile. Um, and so I just want one of these values because I just want to get to the right area. So I click delete and it's going to delete that row. And so quickly I'll show you again. You go grid and image, utilities, grid profile. And now I would say here site 2 important so that I don't overwrite my previous coordinates. I go OK and say for example I want to go to this um, sill in the right in the east over here. I'm just going to click once, click to end the profile, right click, done. And now I go back to my database and you can see here it's put in an X and Y value for site 2. And if I click up here in the top left and right click list, you can see I've got site 1, site 2, and you can keep repeating this multiple times for all your different sites, and ultimately you can plot your sites on the map, so I go map tools, symbols, location plot, and I click OK, and I've got to choose um, the X or Y value here, I'm just going to make my dots quite big so we can see them, OK. And so those are the two points that I um, got the coordinates for. You can always make this a bit smaller. Let's make it down to one. And so this is just a way, a quick way, of extracting coordinates from your map. And so you can see the pl this point plots a bit south of the edge of the sill, but it's, I'm using this as an approximation, so when I'm in the field, it will help me get to this site. So I can take these coordinates and load them into a handheld GPS. And how I would do this is I'd go database, export, CSV, and then I'd give a name to my CSV file. I'm just going to uh, save it on my desktop so I can find it easier. And I'm going to call it test. Oops. And include dummies, yes. If you say no here often, then you don't land up with any data. And more, very important, include line names, because this here is your 
site one, site two, site three, and so on. So it will help you to be able to identify the different sites that you've chosen. Click OK. And now if I go to look on my desktop, scroll up, double click on this test.csv that I've created. It's a little time to open. And you can see here it says site one and it's given me the X and Y coordinates. I had it in UTM and you could always convert this to lat long if you need. This column here is the magnetic data and um, the total field intensity and this I don't really need so I can delete it. But the whole point of this was to use this to get the X and Y values so that in the field I can put it on a handheld GPS and then if I'm walking around or driving around it will help direct me to the site where I want to collect samples.